This is Introduction to Structures, Lesson 5, Shear Force Diagram for Simple Supported Beams. In the first place, it's um, important to understand what is the meaning of the shear force. Shear forces are forces that act on a cross-section in the same plane of the cross-section, producing, producing uh, deformation like you can see in the, in the screen. So basically, it's a relative displacement between two parts of the beam. Um, through the cross section, we are studying in particular. So the shear forces are forces that act on the plane of the cross sections. This is something that we need to understand clearly. Simple supported beams um, are beams, as you know, that are restricted in one extreme by a pin support and in the other extreme by a roller. We have here um, the results of the calculation of reactions from a previous example. So we have all the elements necessary to determine uh, the different values for the shear forces of this beam. In order to calculate the values of the shear forces, we are going to define a series of cross sections we are going to calculate the shear force at the section A, as you can see in the, in the, in the screen, on section 1, 2, 2 prime, and B. It is important to understand that it's necessary to calculate the shear forces just before and after the load, the puntual load, because there is a sudden variation of the shear force at this particular cross section. So in the first place, it's important to remember the definition of the shear force and the shear force at any section of an extractor is equal to the summation of shear forces to the left of the section or to the right with the opposite sign. We are going to um, run some calculation to clarify this definition. Again, the shear force at any section of an extractor is equal to the summation of shear forces to the left or of the section or to the right with the opposite sign. So if we have this exercise, we have this uh, simple supported beam sub subjected to 10 kN per meter from 0 to 3 meters. We have 20 kN punctually applied in the middle of the beam and the reaction are 32.5 kN and 17.5 kN. We need to first sketch a reference lines will be the reference line for the shear forces in this exercise. And this reference line is usually called as a neutral axis. We are going to see the meaning, the exactly meaning of this neutral axis in the second semester. But is for the moment a reference line for our shear forces. If we run the calculations to the left of the first section A, the section A, the cross section A is the cross section in red in the figure. And considering that we are located exactly after the reaction AY, the summation of shear forces to the left of this cross section are only precisely the reaction AY. So the value of this reaction is 32.5 kN is positive because our convention say that it's positive because it's going up. And this is the value of the shear force at this particular cross section. So we can sketch the value in a diagram from our reference lines and up, and adding this value 32.5, which is in kilonewton in this case. The second cross section we're going to use to evaluate the shear force is the section one. And at this exactly uh, cross section, the summation of forces, of the shear forces to the left, it is to say the shear forces from this section to the left of the structure, are the reaction 32.5 kN minus the load which result of the calculation of this portion of the UDL. Only half of the UDL is at, at the left of the cross section one. So this is the reason why in here we have minus because this UDL is coming down, so it's a negative force. 10 kilonewtons per meter times 1.5 meter, which is the distance from A to 1. 
half of the UDL. If we run the calculation of this simple equation, we arrive to the result of 17.5 kilonewtons is the value of the shear force at the cross section one. We can draw as well the, uh, we can sketch the value of 17.5 um, kilonewtons as the shear force at this cross section, and we can have a line connecting 32.5 and 17.5 representing the variation of the shear force from A to 1. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 32.5 is positive because it's going up. The second value we calculated, 17.5, is positive as well, as you saw in the, in the calculation. And this is the reason why I added here a positive sign to distinguish these uh, values of shear forces. We are going to continue now with the section two in green. It's a section that is exactly before the point of application of 20 kilonewton, the punctual load. So in this cross section, and considering the left of the structure, it is to say from here to the left of the beam, we have 32.5 kilonewtons, the reaction, positive because it's going up, minus 10 kilonewtons per meter times three meters in this occasion because all the UDL is on the left of the section two. Running the calculation, we found that the shear force at the section two in green is 2.5 kilonewton, still positive, but is less than the shear forces before. If we represent this value in our diagram, considering the reference line, we have now this trapezium here that is showing us the variation of the shear forces from A to 2, from the value 32.5 to the value 2.5. If we do the calculation in the next cross section to prime, which is exactly after the point of application of 20 kilonewtons, we find that we have 32.5 kilonewtons, positive is the reaction minus 10 kilonewton per meter times 3 meters, which is the UDL, minus 20 kilonewton, which is the puncture low, which is now at the left of the cross section to prime, which is the next, the, the cross section we are analyzing. Writing the calculation of this simple equation, we arrive to the result of minus 17.5 kilonewton, which is the value of the shear force just after the load. We can uh, sketch this value in the opposite side to the other because this is negative. And we can continue the calculation to the next cross section. The next cross section is the section B, and if we calculate the, um, the um, shear force at the section B exactly before reaching the reaction BY, <clears throat> we run the calculation, we have 32.5 kilonewton minus 10 kilonewton per meter times 3 meters minus 20 kilonewton, exactly the same we did before because there is not any other new shear force to the left of this cross section B and the value is minus 17.5. It is to say the, the shear force is constant from the point two prime to the point B. Finally, this value minus 17.5 is equal to 17.5, the value of the reaction at the right extreme of the beam, because we have to close the diagram. The last reaction closed the shear force diagram um, that represents or means that the structure is in equilibrium in terms of shear forces. So at the end, we have now this uh, minus sign in here representing that the, the sign of the shear force from two prime to B is different from the sign of the shear force from the point A to the cross section two in green. Just to end the explanation, here we have a representation then of the variation of the shear forces along the whole beam, starting with a positive value of 32.5 kilonewtons. The variation under UDLs is always linear, and this is the variation of the shear force linearly from 32.5 to 2.5 at the point two. And after that, from two prime to B, we have only 
constant variation of the shear force with the same value 17.5 kilonewtons. So this diagram, again, represents the variation or the values at every cross-section of the shear forces in a beam, in a simple supported beam in this case. This is what we call a shear force diagram and usually is expressed as SFD. Finally, if we combine the results of the shear force diagrams we just did right now and the bending moment diagram we did in the previous lesson, we have a complete analysis of the, this, uh, this simple supported beam, including the calculation of the reaction. These are the reactions that keep this structure in equilibrium. We have the variation of the shear forces along the length of the beam expressed by the shear force diagram. And we have the variation of the moments as well along the beam for this simple supported beam and it's called the bending moment diagram. These uh, two diagrams and the reactions and the free body diagram, which is this diagram in here that, that show the external forces and the reactions, are what we call an engineering language. This is the language that civil engineers use all around the world to express the analysis of a beam. This beam is perfectly analyzed in terms of reactions, shear forces, and bending moment because we've been able to sketch and to calculate every single value for every single cross-section of this beam. This is the advantage of having these diagrams. Once we calculate bending moments and shear forces in a strategic, a strategic points or cross-sections, we are able to sketch this diagram that give us the values of the shear forces and the values of the bending moment in every single cross-section we are interested in. As for example, if we want to know exactly what is the situation and this being in, at this point between 2 and V in the middle, we will know that the shear force is minus 17.5 kilonewtons and we will know that the moment will be half of this 52.5 because we are in the middle in here. So it will be around 26.25 kilonewton per meter because we got the diagram and we know that this variation is linear. So remember that the variation under UDLs for the shear force is a linear function, the variation between forces is constant, the variation of the bending moments under UDLs are always parabolic and the variation between loads is always linear. This is helpful, this is very useful if you want to check your own results and you want to have an intuition about um, uh, how good is a diagram or if, if there is any possibility of having any, any error or mistakes. Thank you very much.